when an oceanic plate collides with a continental plate and the oceanic plate is subducted under the continental plate. The oceanic plate gets smaller and smaller and obviously at some point the continental plate will then strike another landmass, another continental plate. When this happens, neither can subduct underneath the other because both are lighter than the denser rock beneath them. And so they collide and this then deforms the continental crust. There is folding, especially in uh, portions which are deeper and thus uh, semi-molten and more plastic. Uh, this uh, will lead to fractures, which can then lead to igneous intrusions as magma uh, enters in uh, through faults and creates dikes and sills. And this can, uh, in addition to causing earthquakes and volcanoes, um, this can then lead to the folding or uh, orogenies, which result in mountain building. These areas are thus heavily deformed with metamorphic rocks and highly uh, modified uh, geological features. The mountain building or orogeny which occurs at continental continental borders can be quite complex and last tens of millions of years. For example, in the case of the Appalachian Mountains, how were they constructed? It turns out in three separate mountain building periods. One as microcontinents and island arcs, uh, which were uh, in the Iapetus Ocean, which was narrowing and being subducted, uh, these struck the North American uh, nucleus of Laurentia and were fused to a large degree to the mainland. Later, as the Rheic Ocean narrowed, additional island arcs and microcontinents were fused in another mountain building uh, period. Finally, as the supercontinent Pangaea formed and the Rheic Ocean finally closed, there were separate orogenic events in Europe uh, along the Appalachian region of uh, North America and then also in the southeast of North America as the supercontinents collided. 